baby. Come on, there we go. <laughs> she was your little shimmy worked. If it wasn't a little shimmy, they got it going. <laughs> I had to look at the date because I did not know what it was. You didn't know what day it was yet. No. Mm. It is uh, November. I almost said December. It's getting close. Uh, it's November the twenty fifth, twenty twenty three at seven thirty five a.m. here in Central Alabama. That's right. Cool Central Alabama. Cool is right. I could have uh, stayed under the covers a little longer <laughs> this morning. It's a, it's a little cool for sure. Uh, it is almost December. It is past Thanksgiving, so I can officially break out the Christmas stuff. So I had to put my Christmas shirt on this morning. Well, I had a shirt I was going to wear over this, and I felt like with drinking coffee, I might get a little warm. Yeah. So I'm 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 naked. <laughs> no logos. Oh me. But I'm gonna need logos when I go outside because uh it's going it's cold. It's a little chilly. It is a little chilly this morning. A brand new kids video came out bright and early this morning. Uh I had everything ready to go this morning. No hiccups like I did last week and it is out and it is a longer video. I'm um, just kind of testing the waters. I'm seeing like these other kid channels, they'll do like three or four regular, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes or less. And then they put one long one in there. So I decided I was going to do a long one. So it is 45 minutes long and it is basically doing the chores on the farm. And uh, it was fun. Lots of fun. So, Different than doing the chores when we're just doing the chores. Yeah. Well, I just kind of explain things and that kind of stuff. And even have a cameo by the one and only Farmer Rhett. Really? Yeah. Farmer Rhett gives a fun fact about pigs that I did not know. Hmm. So maybe I need to watch the you video. You may need to watch it. You may need to watch it. But yeah, Farmer Red breaks it down for us and tells us a fun fact about pigs that I bet a lot of people don't know. Huh. Okay. So if you would like to know what that is, I was gonna say don't spoil it. <laughs> go check out the latest Cog Hill Farm for Kids video that came out early this morning. But wait till the live's over with. Yeah, wait till the live. It'll still be there. <laughs> That's right. The live will be not, not live anymore. They wouldn't. No, you're exactly right about that. But it was fun. It was a fun video. Even Jesse even plays ball in it. Go. That Jesse. Mm. She, um, it's funny is, is that in the last regular video, I get the ball out, see if Jesse wants to play. She didn't want nothing to do with it. But in the kids' video, <laughs> she plays. It's funny is that she takes those, she's figured out she can take those legs and she kind of high steps like this and she pops that ball. And it and, goes forward. Just and it, and it, it got to going good in the kids video. So that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Oh me, but she's, you know what it was is she didn't want to make reruns. She wants new content. I got you for a new channel. I got you. And that's, that's why she didn't do it. The second time. She was holding out for the kids' videos. That's exactly she right. She wanted to show out for the children. Sure. I don't blame her. Sure, sure she did. I don't blame her. She is, um, she's an absolute mess. She's a firecracker. That's, that is her new nickname. It's firecracker. firecracker. She's a firecracker. She is a firecracker. She is the boss of that pasture. And they all know it. And they all know it. They just keep their distance and, uh. <laughs> I mean, while they all mingle together, mm -hmm. when she gets the firecracker mode, they know it. They get out the way. They get out of the way. Even Mildred. Well, I was about to say, it seems like every time I go in the barn, mm -hmm. when the weather's semi-warm in the afternoon mm -hmm. and Peaches still wants to sleep in, mm -hmm. we open that that door to the stall on the inside so Peaches can go outside if she chooses, however, most of the time she chooses to continue to sleep. But with that door being open and Mildred hears me inside the barn, she's coming in. Yeah, she's coming she's in. She's coming in. 
And yesterday, my mama was out there with me, and we were playing with cats, and I was finishing staining the doors. Yeah. And Mildred heard us talking. Well, here she came into the stall, and mama said, well, Brooke, maybe she just wants to walk around in the barn. <laughs> and I thought to myself, <laughs> Oh. Mama, you just don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, we don't. No, that wouldn't be a good idea. No, it's There's too much stuff that she could get into and hurt herself on. So, well, she would probably be excited yeah. and get to doing that little Mildred bucking. I guess you would say. Yeah. Uh, she kind of goes sideways and jumps and runs, but you know, when I look at her sweet face and I think of of back when she first came here and she was a bottle baby. Mm. Uh, she was so sweet, but then it was like I lost her. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I thought to myself, all this, all this goodness that I've done for you and, and you walk away from me and won't let me touch you. Yeah. That was strange. She was uh, like a transition period there. Like she turned into a teenager real quick. That's right. But um, I felt like, my my baby's gone but she's back <laughs> oh, she's, she's full back. i mean she's been back yeah she's been back but uh she's so full force i think that she may be the most trusting animal here she is very of trusting. us you know yeah you're probably right i mean they all are trusting right. in their own way but she's just i don't know i don't know as big as she is, she's she's real gentle. That's for sure. And I tell you, you're talking about Jesse, and she is the boss. And Jesse is the boss. But sometimes, y'all, she will. Jesse will get to running, and I haven't got it on camera good yet because I'm you're not ever prepared, you know. Right. That. And so she'll get to running. Jesse will, and all of a sudden, Mildred will get to running. Oh my And gracious. they're both running in the pasture, y'all. And I got to catch it. And you just don't never know when it's going to happen. You know, we may be out there 10 times and Jesse does her thing and Mildred don't do anything. But that one time and Mildred starts going sideways and her and Jesse and Jesse does this thing where she runs real fast. And, and she, she does, kicks in the she air. She does this little like, like fake, you know, kick. Just, hi -yah! just, <laughs> it, just. It, it, <laughs> it's almost like it's her signature move. It's so funny. It is funny, but the chances of you catching oh, that on me. camera are just so slim because it's so random. It's random and it's quick. By the time, even by the time I get my phone out and hit record, she's done. It may be done. I mean, it's not like it's not like it lasts a minute. It's like it lasts fifteen seconds. Oh yeah, if that yeah. five seconds yeah. maybe. So I'm gonna catch it though. I'm gonna get it on camera. One day I'm gonna get it, and this y'all gonna thoroughly enjoy it and see what we're talking about because it is a hoot. So Mary Carl and I like to well, since the weather's cooled off, we like to take hikes through the woods, and a lot of times we'll come out on the back side where the goats pasture, Jesse's pasture, Mildred's mm -hmm. pasture, and every single time Mildred's staring at us, <laughs> and it's like. I don't know. And there won't be anybody else there. But we look over and I'll say, Mary Carl, look. And Mildred's just sitting there staring like she saw us go in <laughs> and she knew we were going to come out. And we didn't even know we were going to come out over there. But it's it's funny to see how she uh, <laughs> she always knows that we're walking in the woods and we're coming out in her area. What's funny is, is in the kids video that I do today, it's time to feed. Well, during feeding time, Mildred comes when it. When it gets around 3, 3.30, oh, and she hears you in that barn, she comes in the stall and looks over the stall inside the barn, and she just sits there and stares at you. And so in the kids' video, I'm getting their food stuff ready and explaining things, and the whole time you can see Mildred in that background back there just looking at <laughs> the whole time, and it's so funny. And I don't know it until I edit the videos. I really don't. Well, me talking about how how sweet she is and how you know giving she is to to want to love on you and mm -hmm. such as that when it's feeding time she turns into a big girl <laughs> and and just know that she's going through the opening Ooh. whether you're beside her or not you mm -hmm. need to let her make her way 
and you either be in the lead or behind her because she's she's making her way through. She is making her way. I got now where I tell her to go get in her stall, and I let her. She all and she does. I mean, are you she's go get in your stall, go get in your stall, and she automatically. But that door's got to be open. Oh, the door's got to be open. But um, I got I got all that fixed. Um, I don't think Amy talked about that, but the stall doors on the outside, you could open them and they would stay open. Unless, but if the wind was blowing, that's right, it would shut them. And so I put latches. Y'all probably seen it in the videos now, but I put latches on the outside of the stall so I can latch the doors. And so we ain't had that issue anymore since then. But Mildred to go right in that stall and then i set her bucket in there and shut it that's right that's what i've been doing uh, jason informed me of how he does it and how he makes it work because there was a day when i fed and and i could have been a clown in a rodeo <laughs> real easy because like i said she's gonna she knows where she's going and you yeah. better get out of the way you better get out of the way and she doesn't mean anything harmful no she just big. she's big mm -hmm. and that head gets it's kind of like moody but Moody is way bigger. Well, <laughs> like five times. I'm not bigger. going in there to do that with Moody, <laughs> but and <laughs> I don't know. Yes, Moody. Yeah, Moody is uh Moody don't mean any harm. Well, he doesn't. But but he's just so so big. You know, you know, you can compare it to like if your kid's riding a tricycle and it gets to going too fast and you stand in front of it and you catch it, no problem. Hmm. But if it was a Mack truck that was going too fast, you couldn't stand out there and catch it. That's moody. Yeah. You know, so. And, and those horns can be intimid intimidating they can. too. They can. Mildred doesn't have any horns. I guess she's naturally pulled. She has to be because. Um, there's no. Yeah. There's no evidence. Yeah. Of horn and, mm -mm. and thankfully for that, because mm -hmm. those those horns just add an extra <laughs> intimidation factor. They do. Speaking they of uh, tricycles. I, well, I got to tell you something about okay. Moody before we change subject. So the well diggers, they came they're back. They're not diggers. They're drillers. Well driggers. Dr driggers. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> drillers. So the well drillers, they, the, the second time, the guys that installed the pump. Right. They, um, it was raining and I was out there talking to them and, um, they said, um, does your bull have a name? And I didn't correct them. You know, I just said, yeah, yeah, he's got a name. And they said, we got to know what it is. I said, well, it's Moody. And that guy said, doggone it. And I said, well, he said, I just knew his name was Shaq. <laughs> Shaq. <laughs> oh, my gracious. Oh. But one day, if Moody ever has a little brother, <laughs> this is no hints because there are no plans for Moody to have a, a little brother. Oh. Little brother has to be named Shaq. I thought, you know what? That would have been the best name for it Moody. It would have been, but Moody came with a name. Or Moo over there at I'm a Survivor because they're both just humongous. Shaq would have been perfect. You're right. <laughs> well, my what I was going to say was totally off farm. Yeah. You said tricycle, and it made me think when I was little, my mama's told me this several times, is um, that we lived on a road that there was a fire station at the end of it. And at the end of that road where the fire station was, was a kind of a busy intersection. And so while this road that we walked down, rode our tricycle, whatever, was not so busy, if you went to that intersection, it became busy real fast. Mm -hmm. And so I rode this road frequently in my tricycle. And she said, one day we were walking as normal and I get to pedaling on my tricycle and I get to going so fast that it was kind of downhill. She couldn't catch me. Oh my goodness. And I was headed straight for that busy How'd your intersection. How did feet go that fast? Well, it was going kind of downhill. Yeah, but so, the thing still moved. Well, I don't know, but Mama couldn't <laughs> run that fast. I don't remember it. I wonder if you had your legs up. I don't and know. And the pedals was doing like that. Or Moody was pushing me. <laughs> but she was frantic because she's running as fast as she could, and right. she couldn't catch me, and I'm on my way to the busy intersection. And she said about that time, a fireman stepped out of the really stepped out of the uh, fire depot. What is it called? Firehouse mm -hmm. and stepped in front of me and stopped me from going into that 
busy road. Isn't that crazy? A lot of a lot of times we all have close calls like that. I remember as a kid, I think I told y'all before, my my granddaddy, the uh, granddaddy turned 101 this year. He used to have a trailer at Panama City Beach. Uh-huh. And this is before Panama City is like it is now. Right. And we would walk to the beach. We would take a little back way and then we would cross uh, Front Beach Road and we would be at the beach. And where we were, there wasn't any big hotels or anything back then. I don't know if it is now or not. It's hard for people to imagine I know, they go is. there now that it was ever not so mm-hmm. congested. So it was, and we would always go with my mom's friend, uh, Martha. Mm-hmm. And she had two daughters. And we were about to cross the road like we did Front Beach Road. And the wind blew. And one of those inflatable rafts went blue, and one of the, the one of the daughters, she was younger than me, being a kid, you know, and I was probably nine, eight, nine, so she was probably a six, seven range. She went to go get the raft, and a car was coming, and her mom grabbed her right at the mint. I mean, right there. Oh my gracious! Ain't that crazy? Yes. So That's yeah, scary. but mm, it was an angel watching. Over you and, and her. Yeah, when you time, said yeah. tricycle, it just yeah. it, it jogged my memory of that of that uh, fireman that mm-hmm. saved Brooke's life and enabled me to be here today. <laughs> so so close calls. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Um, I do want to mention that uh, we got a few days left on the free shipping on the coffee when you order four bags or more. There have been some confusion that. That uh, people using the code saying it's not working. It's got to be in all caps, like uh, it's posted everywhere. So the word "free ship" in all caps will get you the free shipping when you buy four bags or more. So and that's in the in the in the United States only. That's in the United States only. And um, Ryan said he is getting extremely low on pumpkin spice coffee, and that at the end of the month will be. It. Yeah, when so, it's gone, it's gone. And it may not make it that far. May not. So anyways, it'll be can, back next year. But if you if that's something that you like, that's right. You want to hold some over. Yep. Uh we'll have to get with Ryan because I've seen some questions that come up about what's the best way to store coffee. And I yeah. can remember <clears throat> going there the day that we first initially saw him doing right, his roasting. Right. And, and I asked him about freezing, and he suggested not to freeze. He suggested not to freeze. He suggested a cool, dry. He says it's a dark, cool area, like your pantry. And those bags that they're in, they vent like they're supposed to. And that bag will last and keep its freshness for six months. Yes. But he can get into more details about that than I can. But I always thought if you froze it, that was the best way. Mm -hmm. But he informed us otherwise. Now, if you freeze it and that works for you, continue on. But... Uh, I was just surprised to hear that that wasn't his recommended way of doing things. Right. That's what he said. Um, You know, I see some comments come up about Panama City and, you know, how it used to be and stuff. When we went, there were several things that I remember that are no longer there. Of course, Petticoat Junction and Miracle Strip. There's Ryan. There's Ryan. Ryan said he says he's dealt with so much pumpkin spice that he didn't even eat pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we did too. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but talking about Panama City, uh, Petticoat Junction, and Miracle Strip. But there was one that if some of you guys are your you know your hardcore Panama City Beach people that were you know going there back in the the seventies and eighties. It was Count Dracula's castle. I'd never heard of it. And Frankenstein stood out of Count Dracula's castle every day and would wave at people. And oh, it, oh y'all, let's, I rem- remember it- that. Oh, it was so exciting. Yeah. And- <laughs> 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 Excitement. But I think that's one that, that maybe people don't remember. And then, um, of course, they, they still got like the original uh, putt-putt golf course there. And But it's not open, is it? It didn't seem to be open, but it still looked like it had been redone. So it may have been a seasonal thing when, when we were down there in October. But 
man, I just remember Count Dracula's castle. It was black and white. It was actually white and had black trim. And it looked like a it looked like a castle. Huh. And it was right on the strip. I've never heard you mention that. Yeah, it was. I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if some other people remember that. But I just vividly well, I remember don't. it. <laughs> and in Playland, the, the arcade, which is still there. The arcade still, not Playland, Funland. I was like, Playland? Playland was our bowling, bowling alley. alley. Funland. <clears throat> Fun Michael Land. said he remembers it. Michael remembers it. I knew somebody would remember that. But uh, Funland, Funland is still there. I wonder if the arcade game, I, next time I go, we have to go in there and see the old arcades and see if this got the arcade games in there. The only arcade <clears throat> game that I like is the one that you move the lever and it goes oh, down get the, with the claw yeah. and it picks up the yeah. stuffed animal that you put $50 in for a 10 cent toy. Mm -hmm. I, I like that one. Mm. I like that one, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I can remember it one time. Was the odds are against you. Well, yeah. because if you were going to win all the time, then they wouldn't do it. Well, that, that thing is, is that crane's not very strong. Yeah. And so the weight of the stuffed animals is kind of an optical illusion that the weight of the stuffed animals is a little too heavy for that crane to pick up exactly. That's where they get you. Oh, yeah. Sure it is. That's where they get you. It's like the fair games when you go to the fair and they got, you know, the jug set up. <clears throat> and it looks so simple. Looks so simple. The basketball goal, but come to find out that basketball was like a, little bit a bigger. half inch smaller than the goal itself. Yeah. The one that used to drive me crazy as a kid was the, the milk bottles all lined up together, together, <clears throat> and you threw the ring and you you would ring the the milk jug. Right. It seems so easy, but it's not. That thing bounces all over the and bounces off. Yeah. Well, I got my my <clears throat> um, thrill on at the fair this year. Uh thought I needed to wind up so hard to pop these balloons and <laughs> And then I uh, come to find out, they kind of whispered to me, you don't have to throw it that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Made me feel slightly oh, silly. But, oh, uh, my goodness. We, we won prizes for Fenya. You did Mary win Mary Carl and I won a prize for Fenya. Speaking of Fenya, mm -hmm. I think our last live on Tuesday, we were late because I had taken Fenya to the vet that That's morning. Right. And I know that some of you guys may be wondering how she's doing. Well, y'all, she's back. She's back to old Femia, and she's feeling good. And I'm just thankful that our child had the intuition to know something was wrong. I see the bird every single day, but she seemed fine to me. Uh, Mary Carl noticed it right off the bat, and I kind of thought to myself, well, maybe she's just wanting to go talk to the vet for a little bit. Maybe she's missing vet talk, and... It, it didn't work that way. I mean, she really was ill, and a little bit of medications got her back on, and she'll finish that up. And you can tell now. Oh, what do you mean? That Fenya, I mean. Oh, she's back. I mean, but, she was not But the, we didn't really notice no, it. No, we didn't know it at all at the but time. But now you can tell it because she is. She's, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was um, now that I think back on it, I realized that she wasn't as active as she normally right, was. Right, right. But, I mean, it was literally one day that she wasn't acting herself, and Mary Carl picked up on it. Yep. And thankfully, we were able to get her to the vet the next day before the holidays hit because, oh, my goodness. Yeah, that would have been it. a long, Whew, a long uh, go. That would have been, been rough. And Mary Carl's done a phenomenal job at giving her her medicine. I don't have to remind her. She's... um. Every time I every time I say Fina take her medicine okay today, yep, she's already got all of it. So, you know, I feel like I'm dealing with a grown child, and I feel like I've been dealing with a grown child for quite some time. <laughs> I sometimes forget that she's a she's a she's a child, oh, you know, man. and I expect her to to. Well, she probably has more knowledge than I do on certain things, anyway. Mm. But uh, I just forget that she's she's just a kid. Talking about the holidays, we can't wait around too long. We're going to have to go get a Christmas tree. Yeah, but, you know, I was thinking, it's probably going to be fairly crowded today. Yeah, today would probably be because both Christmas tree farms around here opened today. Open yesterday. Oh, yeah, open yesterday. Open Sorry. yesterday. So I bet it is kind of crazy. 
I, I was thinking Monday might be a good day. That would maybe a good um, day. Because I always, you know, at least one dog has to go. Yeah. And this year it's going to be two dogs because Dee Dee's got to go too. Did Holly go last year? I do believe she did. Gosh, I can't remember. I do believe she did. I didn't know if we had her by the end because we got her around Christmas last year. Maybe she didn't. Somebody I went. I can't remember. Maybe it was um. Maybe it was Lolo. Yeah, maybe it was Arlo. I don't know. But Dee Dee's got to go. Okay. <clears throat> maybe Dee Dee, so. Dee Dee said she, she's she got to sniff out the right treat. Maybe it was Gidget and Lolo last year. I don't think I would have tried to manage Gidget at the tree farm. I don't I know. really don't. Hmm. I would have had to carry mm. her the whole time because she would have gotten, y'all, that little dog. She's something else. She she's she's unlike any I've ever had before. I love her dearly, but she's so full of energy and I don't see her ever slowing down. <laughs> she's never going to slow down. She's never going to slow down. She's and never going to slow down. She makes <clears throat> us laugh uh, every single day. She her little her little feet just go like this. I mean, just every, like that didn't make anything happen. <laughs> good. Um, like. You know, she she was drinking water yesterday, and I asked her something, and it's not like you know, Gidget, do you want it? Do you want this or hey, Gidget, you want? She, she don't do like this. She goes, you know, yeah. everything is just everything is fast. You know, she has no no slow movement, and I <clears> guess <throat> it's Dee Dee's age, but I feel like they're the same breed. Mm -hmm. I feel like Dee Dee's a Pomeranian and Gidget's a Pomeranian, but it just I don't ever see Gidget acting like Dee Dee. No. I don't but think it. Now, Dee Dee, first thing in the morning, yeah. she's pretty She's pretty giddy because mm -hmm. she wants her food. And y'all, her little front legs, she's bow-legged as it is. So both of her feet face out like this. Right. But she wants that food, and her little straight legs do just like this. It's almost like she's dancing, but they go out. Oh, my goodness. I just mm -hmm. It's two totally different personalities. And I know that that's the case with most all dogs. You know, right. you're not going to compare one to another. And it and you get the same same outcome, but they're so different. They are different. They are different. They're, when I took Fenya to the vet, um, there was a little puppy that was running around in the back, and they informed me that it was the vet's husband's dog. Mm -hmm. And the puppy came to work with her, and they kind of hinted that it was to run some energy down before the puppy gets back home. That allows you know. Not to be not to be so full force. Right. And then when I found out what breed, I knew exactly why. <laughs> it was an Australian Shepherd puppy. Like Holly. Like Holly. <laughs> and uh, they said that she, I think it was a girl. I don't know. But was full steam ahead at eight weeks old. But it was so cute. You told me it was so cute. It was so <clears throat> precious. And I didn't even take a picture. I don't know what I was thinking. You should have. What color was it? Uh, brown, white, and black. Huh. Was it like that, what do they call it? Not brindle. It's called something. I can't think of what it's called. But it wasn't solid like Holly, or was it? Solid? You know, Holly's got that solid brand. It's no, not like it that was, it was tri-colored. Yeah. I mean, it was, <clears throat> it almost looked like, like jewel, a, like have Like jewels color. What's that called? Is it a, uh, um, I can't remember. Meryl. It, no, she wasn't. Okay. She, That's she, like a bandit. Chestnut Hills Bandit. Oh, Hills. I thought you were talking about my bandit. No, I was not like, your what? bandit. Yep. <laughs> oh, goodness. My yep. poor little bandit. Uh, he sat on the side by side yesterday, and that's the first time he's ever done that. And I thought as he sat up there, and I was loving on him, buddy, please don't. Start please don't start him. this. <laughs> I, I, he takes up half the side by side. Oh, half of it. I didn't <laughs> even have any room for my legs. I, I had to turn sideways, oh, but we were just man. sitting, and I, he he climbed his big self right on up there and just sat in the floor while I loved on him. And, and I, I hoped I didn't make a mistake by allowing him to come on up. I doubt it. <clears throat> he is a big baby. He is a big baby, and Rocky is too, but it's just different. Mm -hmm. Different. Very different. Very, very different. They are so different from each other. Talking about dogs being different. <clears throat> um, whale water. <laughs> yeah. As most of y'all know the whale has been drilled. I said it right. Mm -hmm. And all is well. All, all this time I was going to dig this well. Yeah. 
and I'm glad I didn't. 220 foot. 220 foot. Well, I would be mighty sore by now. I saw some people asking, how did he know where to dig? Well, it, all we did was give him our address, and he told us it didn't matter where it was on our property, that it couldn't be but so many feet from the house. It couldn't be, you know, so many feet from your septic system. It couldn't be so many feet from this and that. And that was it. Well, I tell y'all, mm -hmm. um, I kept anticipating that he was going to come by yeah. and talk to us. And that was the anticipation. Well, I had found out from him all those stipulations of where it could go. You know, mm -hmm. as long as it was so many feet from this, this, this. And Jason and I were just mystified as to where the best place to put it was. But they kind of they kind of left it to us. Yeah. And <clears throat> so I get a text on Friday last friday right not not yesterday right. friday but the friday before we're gonna start on your well monday because i had already you know agreed that they could that they could do the drilling after they gave us a price or whatever but we just we we were mystified as to where to put it so when he said he was coming monday i kind of felt like oh my gracious and we've never had anybody here to talk about it but his explanation to us was there's water on your property right it doesn't matter where we drill right i don't know how this works i mean it's just over my head but obviously there is a huge vein yeah that's obviously the, there is a big big vein because it's not like there. we were narrowed down mm -mm. to a certain place we had to put we could have put it anywhere on this 40 anywhere acres anywhere on this 40 acres as long as it was semi-flat and he already guessed how many feet he was going to, have to go. Two hundred and fifty foot is what he, he said, originally. He said between two and three hundred. Okay. Two and three hundred. And he went two twenty. Hey, Catherine. Catherine made it back home this morning. Hope you're warmed up a little bit. Got you a cup of coffee and settled down. I hope so too. But yeah. Two twenty. Two twenty. And I tell you, we had some we had some thoughts of putting it back behind the barn initially yeah and he did say that he likes it to be so many feet from a from a dwelling just because if something were to ever explode yeah that and ease to getting into when yeah. the, the the pump ever was to go bad and there, there was all kind of things about that so so by the time they got here monday morning jason and i had kind of an idea yeah of where to put it they pull in with this huge truck it's it's a well drilling truck. And I'm like, how are y'all doing? Well, they didn't want to talk. They wanted to work. Yeah. It they was, didn't. where are you thinking about putting it? Mm -hmm. well, we're thinking about over here. Okay, let's get it backed up. And <laughs> bam. Is, there's any utilities right here. That was well, we it. showed them. We showed them everything there. And and the reason why we put it there is is that wheel is basically five foot or less from water line mm -hmm. that will feed the farm. That's right. And five foot or less from the power. So and it's out of the it. way where nothing is going to yeah. there's not going to be any traffic driving. I thought about you know, you know how you second guess yourself. Oh, I second guess myself all evening that first so evening. I thought about man, we should probably should have put it right there, right there on the corner of the uh aviary pasture, right there, because there's power and water there yeah. too. And it would have been a little bit closer to the pond. But then I thought, you know what? It's right there on the corner. We drive right yeah. through there all the time. Even though <clears> it's <throat> going to have a cover over it, something, you're not going to be paying attention. Something could Something's happen. Something's going to happen to it. And that, you know, right there is a perfect spot because there's no traffic <laughs> right there. All that kind of good stuff. <coughs> now we, so our next thing was, and I asked them, you know, when they come put the pump in, I wasn't expecting to bring another truck like that to put the pump in. Um, but I asked him about, you know, did I need to build a well house mm -hmm. and a water well house, a not, pump house, not a shamu house, a pump, a pump house. house. That's what I said. Do I need to build a pump house? And he said, you can build a pump house if you want to, but the roof has to come off of it or it has to be able to come off of it in case you ever have an issue with the pump. And it needs to be replaced. And I thought, well, you know what? That never did cross my mind. I said, well, what do most people do? He said, well, a lot of people buy the fake rock. Or you can get a box to go over it. And I was like, okay. <clears throat> well, I started looking at these fake rocks. And I started reading the reviews. And each setup's different. 
you know, each each well setup is completely different. Each one's different size, different. Yes, tanks are different. Everything's different. And so I was in the reviews for this, you know, those rocks are made like this and like this and that it didn't fit the, their tank with because the rock's not uniform shape that the, you know, their tank may hit the part of it, even right. though it's measured the right height and sat awkward. And then I start thinking, what if the wind blows real hard and blows the, the rock over? Um, I don't know. I just, and, and I, I started thinking, you know what? What's it going to look like out there with a big plastic fake rock? <laughs> you know, and it, it, it's going to look fake. Right. And then it's going to fade. And then I told you, I was like, you know what? I'm going to build, a, I'm going to build a box or a house for it. And, and immediately. I, I thought. Brooke, let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all. Brooke didn't hesitate. She didn't say, um, yeah, what, what kind of ideas you got on this? That would be cute. Let's do this. Look, let's do that. She said, go on and send Roberto a text <laughs> and see when he can come over here. <laughs> Y'all, we got too much going on as it is. I mean, we have projects that are yet to be completed that have been ongoing for as long as they have. And for us to stop what we're doing and spend six months building a box. <laughs> and it needs to be done quick because we got cold weather that's going to come. Mm -hmm. And we don't want something to freeze up or anything like that. So I did send him a text. You were right. It'll take him a half a day, if that, um, to build what we want. And I think we're going to build it just like a nothing special, just a little just a little house with a slant roof that has a door in the front and the roof lifts up like this. It's and small and small. I don't want it big or anything like that. It's not going to be a staple of the property. Right. It's going to be uh, something that hopefully you don't even notice. I know. I like the idea of. I saw a lot of them. People make them look like an outhouse, mm -hmm. which I think is super cute. But I think those pump houses are near their house. So mm -hmm. it kind of ties in. Yeah. But to have an outhouse sitting right there would look really, really strange to me. And so I was like, that eh, making it like an outhouse is not going to work. That's just going to look weird. Well, we, we just want it for the simple fact that it needs to be covered. And it needs to be insulated. Yep. And I, I don't know if y'all will agree with me, but if that thing is insulated and it's just sitting out in the big wide world, Bandit and Rocky are going to think that that's the best play toy that they have ever seen. Yeah, if it's just got an insulated cover on it, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. And I thought about them with the fake rock, too. Yeah, they would probably think that fake rock was a, a big ball. Yeah, absolutely. I got a picture of what I'm thinking that I sent Roberto. But, very simple but something like this for it to cover it up that way the roof's removable and it's got a door on it in case we need to anything electrical or plumbing has to be done but that's what i'm thinking about right there for him to build plus i'm thinking too maybe the whole thing could lift up or if we need it to as well so but that's yeah. it and then the <clears throat> company that i reached out to about checking the water itself yes and um, possibly installing a filtration system. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they will be able to get out here next week and yep. take a look at things. And I'm interested to see what's in the water. Yeah, me too. I mean, there, there, there's <clears throat> all different contaminations that happen in groundwater yep. that I didn't know about, honestly. I thought that when you dug a well, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I said it dug a well that you could immediately drink the water and that anything that came from underground was safe. It was filtered through. I yeah. thought it was filtered by the mm -hmm. ground and, and that it was naturally safe, but I found out real quick that that's not the case and water needs to be tested not only for us, but for animals Yeah, and uh, make sure everything's safe before it goes into our bodies. Yep. I agree. And I, I believe everything's going to be fine. There was no sulfur smell of the water or anything like that. Um, and there's wells coming out of this same vein around here, but, it's but st it still has to be tested. Still has to I be. I mean, yep. there there is um, contaminants such as bacteria that, of course, right. you can't see, you can't smell, you don't know what's there, and it right. needs to be filtered out. So 
we're not going to drink any of that until it's tested and and until it's uh, filtered. Right. So that is the thing, and um, I'm excited. I'm really excited. We uh, we have already ordered the hose to start filling up the the uh, the pond, and yeah, super excited. Really yeah. am. I might sit out there day and night while the pond's getting its fill on. Right. Uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm dreaming. I'm thinking of all the things that this pond being full can bring. And I was thinking the other day, I said, you know what? Next year, I'm going to build me a float. And I'm going to put a floating Christmas tree <laughs> on this. And I've already looked at, like, things to make buoys or whatever yeah, to make yeah, things float yeah. and i'm gonna have me a floating christmas tree that's gonna go around the pond uh -huh. with some lights that are obviously solar or battery powered uh -huh. so yes i mean my my dreaming is just it's it's taking a, a new level don't that's you think awesome. that would be cute yep, yep. a floating that christmas tree that really would be cute <clears throat> That would be cute. And of course, I would love to have a fountain in the pond right. for aeration um, purposes and for looks. Yeah. Now, Mary Carl's theory is that's way too fancy. We don't need a fountain in the <laughs> pond. And I'm like, who are you? You're just a teenager. You know, and I think the fountain in the pond also would help with mosquitoes because the water flow. Yep. I tell you what, when, when our pond is a mud hole. Mm -hmm. And it has been for quite some time. But with that water sitting stagnant, you would think that we would have mosquitoes out the yi-yang. Not the case, because there are so many frogs. Oh, my gracious. And I'm talking bullfrogs. I'm <clears throat> not talking your little toads that you see running around. I'm talking full-fledged bull toads. I mean, bullfrogs. Bull toads. Bull These toads. are bull toads. <laughs> not like Moody, like a steer, but a bull toad. Bull toad. At night, back during the hot summer months, Ooh, you could go woo. outside, y'all, and it was the most wonderful sound. But during the day, you couldn't see all the bull toads. They were hidden away yep. under the water and in the mud. Yep. But come nighttime, those bull toads got to hollering, and I think that's the reason we didn't have mosquitoes. I think so, too. And green, 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 green. Like, almost fluorescent green. The water? No. Oh. The bull toads. The bull toads. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, are... back when we lived at our old farm. We had a lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> well, not that's not what I was going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. We had this witch's pot, yeah. and y'all may remember it. It sat right in front of our little barn that mm -hmm. we built while I was pregnant, mind you. <laughs> so I think back on that. I was a supervisor at the time because I couldn't do any building. But right. Jason built this little barn. Right. And the witch's pot had power, so it had a little fountain that, that ran continuously. That's right. And we could hear this noise from time to time. And it was kind of like a mix of a Victorian crown pigeon and nugget. Yes. It was a, sounded like it came from deep down with the end. It was big too. And so we knew we had a frog or a toad, mm -hmm. I should say, a bull toad. But we didn't lay eyes on him until this one day. And Jason came home after he saw this monster and told me that we have a toad that He's lives in the witch's pot. Biggin. A biggin. Mm -hmm. How big was he, Jason? Legs stretched out and all. He's probably about yay big. I mean, stretched all the way out. He was a big one from head to huge, the end of his toes. Huge. And he lived there forever. So we named him Burl. Yeah. And... He he did. He lived there forever, but we would very rarely see Burl. Yeah. But when we did, it was a monumental day. Yep. You know, we oh, we, Burl. we celebrated the sight of Burl mm -hmm. because he stayed hidden. And one day he just was not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't really want to know what could have took Burl's life because he was pretty big. Maybe he just maybe a frog life expectancy at now. But I think, my gosh, he had to be there for three years. He was huge and he was loud and it was kind of scary. Yeah. I remember Mary Carl kind of being scared of him because yeah. she she finally caught a glimpse of him and, right. and realized how big he was. And it was kind of intimidating to see something that big. Mm -hmm. But I don't know where he went. 
I know that when we moved, um, you know, he had not been there for some time. Right. But maybe he just moved on to another. <clears throat> maybe he outgrew the witch's pot. Maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe he had to find him a new home. Mm hmm. But that that uh, we had lots of lots and lots of tree frogs at the old farm, but we got lots of bull toads here. Lots of bull toads. We got lots of tree frogs here too. We do, but I think down towards the pond, I think it's more bullfrog type. Yeah. And and the green color, Jason's not telling a story. They are very vibrant. They're almost very like your vibrant. shirt color. Yep. With a little more lime tint to it. It is. They are very <laughs> vibrant. Uh, somebody said that, uh, that toad life expectancy is 10 to 15 years. Who knew? Maybe he moved on. Maybe he moved on. Maybe he did. Maybe he found a wife. I don't think any of our animals, like we're ducks or whatever. A, a boy. It could have been a female. It we could have been know. a female. <laughs> but it was big. Oh, me. It was big. Yeah. He's big. Big old bullfrog. But exciting times ahead for the pond to have water. I can't wait. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like that was our whole, uh, well, it definitely was. It's nobody's fault that right, the pond didn't right. get full, but it depended on runoff, which isn't going to happen. Well, I mean, right now, we just had no rain. No, I'm saying it, it yeah. isn't going to happen to fill the whole pond up. Right. Our expectation of time. Right. And also, there is a, um, there is a, a water source right by the pond that's a lot smaller that we plan to use to keep it at the level. <clears throat> that's right. Not, not, you know, once it gets filled up and gets saturated, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to, you know, keep the well water going in at all. Oh, no, time. it won't be yep. running all the time. Hopefully. Yep. I mean, I know it's got to get saturated, so right. I don't expect to fill it up and it stay, stay that, way. that way. Yeah. <clears throat> this will have to. <clears throat> excuse me, this will have to be an ongoing process to, right. to keep it at the level. But I think once it gets there, you know, and the, and the saturation stops, right. then uh, we'll be good to go. That's right. Um, now, some people have been concerned about us burning the pump up, uh, filling the pond up. The, the, the whale people had no hesitation about burning the pump up and said it should be perfectly fine. And I did some research on this. And from the, the the forum, the message board I went to, the 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 pump pros or whoever these people are said that usually what burns a pump up is it's cycling on and off a lot, hmm. not running all the time. <laughs> and ours does have an overheat it mechanism does, that'll does that cut too. off. Right, it does that. It does have that too. So. That, that somebody was asking about filling a pond up, and they said that filling a pond up really has no effect on the pump. It's that if it stops, start, start, stop, start, starts, that that right there, a lot will make it do it. So they were saying if you had a huge holding tank and you were draining the water out of the holding tank and the pump comes on and fills the holding tank up and then you drain it again, that that had more effect on the pump than it running <clears throat> a lot. So that 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 was the information we've been told and and found. So, well, <clears throat> I tell y'all, I I was doing some reading and I I did more reading after I found out he was coming <laughs> versus before I found out he was coming. Meaning, the well driller. Mm -hmm. So upon my research, I thought, oh no, what if we what if we pump so much water that the well goes dry? Right. And this was on and on in my reading the well, you know, I pump my well dry, right, right. fill in my pond. So I told the, the pump guy I said, or the well guy, <clears throat> I said, can we drain the water, the well dry? Mm -hmm. And he said, no, mm -hmm. no, you're not going to drain the well dry. Right. And I was relieved to hear that because, you know, just when you get something in your mind and you think that could happen, right. It, it just doesn't go away until you get reconfirmation. Well, he knows the water table. And at this time, it's no chance that we could drain the well. I feel like it's like a huge underground ocean that's just flowing right up under. So I we don't, don't even know it. <laughs> it's mystifying to me. <sighs> I don't know that I'll ever have the concept of how right, that works. Right. And how that big of a vein could be under our whole entire property. Right. But I'm not asking any more questions. We hit water <laughs> and it's going to be pumped out. 
Yes. Initially, when I first contacted, I, I have reached, I think I told y'all this, I oh, reached gosh. out to a lot of well drillers and they all sent me to somebody else. And it was because they were closer to us. They were less busy. They uh, knew more about our area. Da, 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 retired. Know, retired. Yeah. On and on and yeah, on. Yeah, it was crazy. So when I finally found somebody and I knew that he was knowledgeable upon our first conversation, mm -hmm. um, I told him that we wanted a well to fill the pond. And so that was the initial conversation. We were having a well drilled that was going to fill our pond, right. period. That was it. So as we got closer to time, I would reach out to him and say, you know, just just want to touch base with you and see if you're able to come by. Because right. that was, like I told y'all, that was our plan, him to come here and us go over a lot of things. Right. Um, he, um, he opened up a kind of a can of worms because he said, I've put in a lot of wells in Billingsley for houses. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, and this may sound crazy, but my mind was thinking, we want this well to fill the pond, period. Right. We could have this well to possibly feed, you know, water our animals. Garden. To, to, to fruit water. orchard. And, and like I said, that sounds crazy, yep. but, but you get something on your mind. And, and I wasn't thinking of going any further than filling up the pond with the well. Right. But once I figured out that we could, it was very easy. Yeah. It was very easy for us to use that same well that's going to fill our pond to tap into our existing pipes. Right. Where we have county water now. Yeah. Uh, just, it went one step further and we felt like it was that much more beneficial for us. I agree. I agree hundred percent. And I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I'm also, excited to know, see that big, big, big gush of water coming in and filling the pond. That too. And, you know, there is, you know, you got that in the back of your mind about it getting tested and something being wrong. But I, I feel like we're okay. I really do feel like we're okay. Well, it's not that we're not okay. It's it, if that water comes into our house, it can affect our appliances. Right. Because the water is hard. It's right. probably going to be hard. Mm -hmm. um, going to contain more minerals than what the county water does. Right. And it needs to have a filtration system in order to remove that, to not take a toll on our washing machine or right. not make rings around our toilet that don't we don't currently have. Right. So, you know, that that's more so what I'm concerned with than bacteria, so to speak. I got you. But. I want to make sure all the everything we're going to fill the pond before we put this water filtration system in. I can tell you that. Yeah, absolutely. Because the pond water can be whatever. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. And that little valve is already there. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do anything but plug that pump in. Right. To make that water flow out. So. So fingers crossed. So I may have a Christmas tree floating in the pond this year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should go ahead and build my little platform. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my I've goodness. been looking at floating docks for two years now. And I find a lot of them on on uh, Marketplace. Uh -huh. But I just can't really figure out how I'm going to get it here. I find somebody that can deliver it. On Deli a big truck. Deliver a floating dock. I'd be on a big truck. Our Brown Farmhouse said they installed a new softener slash filtration system for their well, and they love it. Huh. Well, that's what I hope that uh, we're going to find out. Yeah. And, and and this should be talked about to you off camera, but if we install the filtration system in our house, will it, will it run Mama's house as well? Or is that two separate waters? That's two separate waters. So we'll have to have two systems installed. Possibly, yes. Oh, no. We'll just have to ask them. I don't know where they put it at. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I would, that, that's something that we'll have to discuss with them once they get here. So. Okay. Yep. Well, the pond's probably going to have hard water. Yep. But it doesn't have a voice to tell me it doesn't want it. So that's what <laughs> it's getting. I don't want to filter anything before oh, um, before the house if I don't have to. You know, if there's right. no bacteria right. and animals are fine without it, then we don't want to filter all that water. Right, right. Because that takes a toll on the system. We'll just have to ask them and see what they say. Well, we'll let them. We'll 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 let them give us the ins and outs. That's what right. Because we uh, have no clue. The company's out of Birmingham, and there's excellent reviews, but I have um, I have yet to find out all the details. Right. 
Uh, there was a question that I saw pop up a lot um, about the milk room. And, you know, I explained in the video that, you know, I put the stove and refrigerator in there. And it, it seems to be that there's some people that don't understand why in the world would we milk a goat in there now <laughs> that now that it looks so pretty and and it's nice. And but that was the whole reason we built that room is, to, right. is to milk a goat. But I'm thinking that they got the impression that, you know, three goats are going to be in there and they're going to be running around and and jumping on stuff and you know doing number one and number two everywhere it's not the but case. That, that's really not going to be the case and the cats too people couldn't understand why would we be canning or freeze drying if there's cats in there but i'm like number one if you had a cat in your house you still would cook and that kind of thing but um the goats once they get trained once they get trained they're just i don't know if you Maybe they had never seen it happen before. Well, I was just thinking that maybe I should get with Laura, my friend Laura, that has Simply Making It, mm -hmm. and go over there and just show how her whole process is done. I think that'd be a great idea. Just Her, her room is very similar to... Very similar to ours. Very similar. She's got a counter, a sink. She's a got a refrigerator. refrigerator. I think she's got two refrigerators. She does. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. In our milk stand, the goats automatically, even Miss Terry at Old yeah. South Goat Farm, she had like four milk stands. That's right. But y'all was in a little house and she had kitchen. I mean, she had all that stuff in there. It was a little like storage building. Yeah. But when you open up that door, that goat, once it gets trained, it's going to go straight to that milk stand and get milked mm -hmm. and that's it and yeah, then she's gonna a, go right back out and one goat at a time it's an in out yeah situation right. that there's no lollygagging around that's right i mean you've got everything ready there's not a goat wandering around mm -hmm. i think that maybe i should do that i should go over to Laura's be and, um, because she's the first person that i ever saw the whole process mm -hmm. and i i think this whole time that i've been thinking about milking our goats i'm basing it off laura's setup yeah in my mind right you know I, as i think back and I, I realize what we did it's very similar to hers very similar there's a hers. little area outside yeah. where the goats are all enclosed right and then when that goat gets finished this one goes that's out that's right and i may not be milking more than right. one Right. But in laura's yeah. situation it's just a circle that one goes out the next one, next comes, one in, comes in and repeat the process and that's that's that is our plan to do with the goats there too. So when, when I think once they see it and once they see how we're doing it and it all works out, it's you know, explain itself. I'm totally used to it um, because, you know, there's so many things that we've done over the years in my mind that I know it's going to work. Oh yeah. And that some people think that, Hey, why are you doing it that way? Why are you doing this? And, but then once we do it, and they see it, they're like, oh, yeah. I, now oh, I, now, now I, know. I get it. Now I know what you do. <laughs> the, um, the, <sighs> the, the part that, well, this sounds crazy. Yeah. But I'm excited because our kitties, we have three kitties, as you guys know, that live in the barn. And Laura, both Laura and Terry are two milk mentors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That first stream of milk is always discarded because it can have some, you know, hair in it or right, whatever right 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 but kitties don't care so <laughs> so what was terry's name midnight no that's laura's isn't it terry's cat was named devil cat devil or... cat or h-e-l-l -L cat <laughs> yeah that's what it was. i think that's what it was because it was crazy it was crazy but to see those kitties lined up and waiting for their first stream of milk every yeah. morning yeah it's gonna be exciting yeah yeah it was uh it was it was is it's gonna be fun and i think you showing laura set up which is in a barn yeah it's very it's very very similar to what we're thinking about doing i think that's the whole reason we modeled our room the way we did i think it is too i mean i didn't have in my mind Probably hey i want this to be just like laura's yeah. but i think that was that was all i had to base it mm -hmm. on was the way she does things and she does it by hand yeah she does it by hand uh i don't know if i can do that We'll see. Maybe I, try it first and then. Uh, oh, I'm not going to go out and buy a machine right. immediately. But I don't know. Y'all, Laura went on vacation and <laughs> and I milked her goats for her. That was, the, yeah. that was the best experience I ever had. Mm -hmm. But yet it was also realizing how 
hands on, literally it is. I mean, your muscles get so tight and so sore. And y'all, Laura's a little lady. She's a very small lady. And for her to have done this for as long as she has without a machine, I very much so commend her. I will feel like I have fallen short if I go out and buy a machine. I'll tell you what, I bet a full grown man shakes hands with Miss Laura. She can make him go down to his knees if she she wanted to, just squeezing him. I mean, she does this (laughs) every single day and multiple goats, you know, she's, she's, and, and that's, that's her, that's where her soap is made. Right. It's from her goat's milk. That's right. She's not going out and buying anything. It's Mm-mm. all a, a one woman show. And that's what makes her business so special to us is, first of all, she's local. Right. I mean, she's a friend and she's a very good person mm-hmm. that loves what she does. And for us to be able to help her and, and help you guys support right. her business means the world to us. She's got it going on. She does got it going on. Now, I don't know what our plans are for our milk, but I can tell you, I'm not making soap. I'm leaving that for Laura. <laughs> I'm not making soap. Yeah. I've told her time and time again. That's right. You don't have to worry about me making soap because that's your thing. That is your expertise. Um, I see some comments coming up that um, that is called an aquifer that we get. An aquifer? Mm-hmm. Huh. So that that's why. It's an aquifer that we hit. Uh, I still so, don't understand it. I don't. I, I don't know that I need to understand it. Right. I need to know that I turn that spigot on and that water comes out, and it's approved for me to drink or fill my pond. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one little thing that, just to give you guys a head up, I may or may not do it. Uh, I, I get the feeling that I want to do it, and then I talk to some of my creator buddies daniel dutch lester some other ones and then matter of fact the other day i come this close to doing it and that is start posting videos or long videos back on facebook even though facebook had i didn't know where you were going with this totally messed us up and they were complaining about issues that they had with facebook and i was like well that answers that i'm not going to do it but i keep thinking i may try it again and if i do try it i think it'd be something like um, you know, the video will post on YouTube first and then three days later it may pop up on Facebook. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, I almost did it last week and then either Daniel or Lester was fussing about Facebook and I was like, well, I'm not doing it. So, but then I'm like, well, maybe I should do it, but I don't know. I just wanted to give you guys a head up if all of a sudden you see, a uh, video pop up on Facebook, and it's one of our longer videos, then you'll know what it is. That that was just a heads up on that. But it may or may not happen. But it may or may not happen. I don't know. I'm still torn on it. Um, but well, I feel like they're never going to be out for the creator. Um, they're not. It's never it, it, It's never going to have all the kinks worked out, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. But I don't know. It, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Right now, I'm concentrating on getting a pond field. <laughs> Well, like the other day when I took Mary Carl to the orthodontist, mm-hmm. that was the day that they were installing or drilling the well. Right. I went and tried to buy the pipe that I needed that day. Right. For pumping, for filling the pond. And I was so disappointed to find that the local store that I went to didn't have enough pipe. Yeah. Because it's 300 foot from from the right. well head. Yep. Is that what you call it? Yeah. To the pond, and uh, so we had to order it. But one day, maybe by Christmas, maybe one day, Christmas. yeah, that would be awesome. We could have a Christmas, um, in my floating Christmas tree, in floating Christmas tree, yeah. <laughs> maybe you'll see Nugget and Goldie out there on the platform <laughs> holding hands, looking like they're ice skating. Across. Well, it won't be ice skating, but it'll look like they're ice skating, yep. on the pond. Hmm. Wishful, wishful. Thinking. Speaking of uh, wishful. Do you wish Alabama will come out on top today? Well, I was going to say today is a big Saturday. It is Rivalry Saturday. And this is usually the week that all the big rivalry games are happening. Of course, you have the Iron Bowl, which is Alabama and Auburn today at 2.30. You got Ohio State and Michigan, which is another big one today. And so some big, big, big games happening 
today. Um, whoo! Always nervous on Iron Bow. To me, sometimes their record means absolutely nothing. That's right. On these games. And it is being played in Auburn, which always the craziest things seem to happen. And it can be the end of a uh, uh, error for, yeah. for some, so to speak. They could be undefeated and still lose this game. But Crazy. Yeah, you, you think you know who's going to come out on top, and it doesn't always go that way. That's right. So I'm going to be out of here at 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I need to ride over to uh, the South Alabama and go hang out with Perry Hill Farm and watch the game with them is what well, I need to do. Well, they're on the red team, so <laughs> – that could go yeah. very well. Well, I think me and Jace would probably end up, hey, they might have to uh, put us in another location. Yeah, they might have to. <laughs> I'm not going if you do. Oh, me. But, yeah, big day today. And um hope y'all have a... Uh, my coffee's been empty. Has it been empty? It's been empty. Oh, my it goodness. It was a good one today. You know, sometimes... And y'all, I took your advice. I don't put that, I don't put that low calorie stuff in my coffee anymore. <laughs> All I needed was a few, a few, few of you, you guys. to say, yes. uh, drink that coffee, drink That's that right. coffee. Life's too short. That's and right. After reading two of those, I drink my coffee the way I love it, and I hope you do too. That's right. Ooh, Florida State and Florida is okay. today, and I'm assuming Georgia plays Georgia Tech. Well, don't assume. Don't assume. So, <laughs> anyway, well, today is Saturday, so that means we'll be back here on Tuesday. That's right. At 4 o'clock. That's if right. All, if all is, goes as planned. That's right. And um, raise your cup. Raise your cup. And we hope y'all have a outstanding weekend and may the best team win, right? That's, that's right. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. <laughs> here we go. Oh, my goodness. Y'all have a wonderful day. We'll catch y'all on the next live, which will be on Tuesday. And y'all be good. good.